Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. When you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. This is your father you're dealing with and he knows better than you what you need. the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greetings and thank you for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and uh, share the Word of God with you and also to be able to pray with you. Uh, We really love to hear from you to uh, understand how these telecasts are enriching your walk with God and enriching your spiritual life. Uh, So please do take a moment to send us an email. Uh, Let us know how these telecasts are helping you. And also we encourage you to make use of the free resources 
available on our church website. Uh, you can go to our church website and download uh, all our free publications. We've, um, there are different topics. Some are small books. Some are uh, little larger books that, that cover various subjects of interest from the Word of God. And these are available for you for free. So download them from our church website. Also, all our Sunday sermons uh, preached live here at All People's Church in Bangalore are available on our church website. All our TV programs, in case you've missed any uh, along the way, you, you could go back and watch those programs on demand anytime uh, and, of course, from anywhere. So make use of these church, uh, resources available on our church website. Over the few week, last few weeks, we've been talking about prayer. And as we continue to build our life of prayer, we want to look at the Lord Jesus as our model and also our standard in prayer. And so on the program today, we just want to highlight a few things from the life of Jesus with respect to his prayer life, things that we can glean. This is not necessarily a complete study of all the things we observe in his prayer life, but we want to just point a few things, highlight a few things, and also maybe uh, answer a couple of other questions when it comes to prayer. First of all, we see something very interesting. You know, if there was ever a person on earth who didn't need to pray, it would have been the Lord Jesus. He was God who became man. This was the Word, the eternal Word, becoming man. And He's walking on the earth sinless, perfect, uh, spotless. I mean, he absolutely had no sin in his life. And he, this was God walking as man. And, and of course, we know he confined himself to the limitations of, of man. He walked as a man. But yet, we understand that, you know, if there was ever a person who didn't need to pray, it would have been Jesus. He could have just walked, gone up every morning and just gone about uh, doing what God the Father had ordained for his life, and that would be uh, just perfectly fine. There was no need for him to uh, pray. But surprisingly, and yet so very importantly for us to uh, observe, is that the Lord Jesus spent much time in prayer. He didn't just have a very casual life of prayer, you know, the daily maybe five-minute prayer, good morning, Father, I'm still alive, hope you are, and go about his life. Uh, it wasn't that. Uh, we find Jesus spending much time in prayer, and it's very interesting to observe the various situations in which he intentionally withdrew himself in order to be alone with the Father. Let's look at some of these scriptures here, just to inspire us and also enlighten us on the importance uh, of praying and in praying in various situations. First of all, as a daily routine, in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, we see uh, it saying, In the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. So it almost seems like this was his custom. It was his, uh, his normal habit that he would get up early in the morning, go away to a solitary place, and be alone in prayer. Now, this is the Lord Jesus doing it. Uh, how very important it is for you and me then to have uh, this discipline, if you will, or this routine or this daily habit of just being alone with God. Jesus woke up early. He went to a solitary place and he spent time alone with the Father. In Mark chapter 5, verses 45 and 46, we read, Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Very interesting. Here's another situation in the life of Jesus in Mark chapter 6, where he had this big crowd of people waiting, uh, just listening to him, preaching, and so on. So he had these multitudes of people to whom he had just ministered to. But then what is the next thing he does? He sends his own disciples. He tells them, to go uh, 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 to the other side, he tells them to go. He sends the multitudes away and he withdraws so that he could be alone with the Father to pray. Not even with his disciples. He sends his disciples away, he sends the multitudes away, and he withdraws so that he could be alone in prayer. You know, it teaches us the importance 
of disengaging from the work, uh, from the ministry, and disengaging even from uh, the ministry team. Jesus disengaged even from his own disciples. He said, I need to be alone with the Father in prayer. If the Lord Jesus did that, how much more should you and I learn to take a step out of the busyness of life? Sure, there are multitudes waiting. There are needs to be met. There are people who need to be served. But you take that step out of that uh, and to be alone with the Father. Another interesting uh, situation we see here in Luke chapter 5, verses 15 to 16. It says, The report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. So you imagine, here were great crowds of people coming to Jesus. They brought to him all their sick people. They came to hear and to be healed. And of course, he ministered to them. But then it says he often withdrew himself to pray and uh, be alone with the Father. So it seemed like this was a daily pattern. There would be crowds coming to hear him, to be ministered by, to by him, to hear and be healed. So he would do that, but he would also withdraw himself. That means it was not just an occasional time out to go in prayer, but it was something that was ongoing. It was routine that, yes, the crowds came. Yes, the multitudes came, but he often withdrew himself. Time and again and again as an ongoing thing, he took time out. And he maintained that time out to be alone with the Father. So important for us, yet again, to keep this recurring time of God with prayer and on an ongoing basis, uh, be alone with God. Another instance we have here in Luke chapter 6 and verse 12, uh, it says, It came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Now, why is this significant? Because if you read the next few verses, right after this, Jesus handpicked his 12 apostles and he appointed them. It seems to suggest here that just before he made this really important decision of who would be his 12 apostles, the one thing he did, one thing we see him doing is he spends the entire night in prayer alone with the Father, and then he appoints 12 disciples. So uh, something so important, uh, and he took the time out to pray. Uh, uh, it, the scriptures doesn't ne don't necessarily tell us this, but we could imagine that part of that time in prayer must have been engaging with the Father to know who are the 12 people that he had to pick to be his apostles. Uh, it teaches us something here that before great, mo great, uh, great decisions, uh, before we make great decisions, very important decisions, what should we do? We should precede that with that extended time of prayer with the Father. And we see another interesting uh, situation in the life of Jesus in John 6 and verse 15. It says, Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. A very interesting situation. The crowds came and said, Jesus, we want to make you king. I mean, we don't care about the Romans. We don't care about uh, Herod or anyone else who has authority. We want you to be king. I mean, you've got the popular vote. We want you to be king. And you know what Jesus does? He withdraws himself and he goes to be alone, obviously to be alone with the Father. So in a moment when uh, people are celebrating you, in a moment when people want to elevate you, in a moment when people want to exalt you, you don't step into that, but you withdraw and you go and pray. Again, a great example set for us by Jesus himself. In that situation, when people were coming to exalt him, he withdrew and he went to be alone with the Father in prayer. So we see these amazing examples set for us by the Lord Jesus himself, that he prayed regularly, he prayed extensively, he prayed uh, uh, in all kinds of situations, he chose to withdraw and be alone with the Father. So we need to take this example to heart and, and always keep this before us. If there's an example of a person who prayed, if there's an example of a life of prayer, is a, if there's a, any testimony to the importance of prayer, it would be the life of Jesus himself. And we need to go back to these passages in the Gospels and, and look at it over and over again so that we stay motivated 
we stay inspired, we stay challenged to maintain a life of prayer. Another very important thing we want to highlight from the life of Jesus is this, that the Lord Jesus never experienced failure in prayer. And that's important for us to consider because we are obviously, uh, all of us have experienced one or more and sometimes many failures in prayer. But the Lord Jesus never faced any failure in prayer. There's ne- there was never a prayer that Jesus prayed which the Father didn't answer according to what Jesus asked. We know that because in John chapter 11, verses 41 and 42, this is what the Lord Jesus says. He says, when Jesus is standing before the tomb of Lazarus, it says here, Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. So look how Jesus is talking to the Father. He says, Father, I thank you. You've heard my prayer. I know you've already heard me. That means Jesus has already prayed about this situation before he actually came into it. He had already prayed about what to do with Lazarus before he stood there before the tomb that was sealed. He already had prayed. And so he says, Father, I know you've already heard me. Yet, for the sake of all the people, I'm saying this loudly, that you have heard my prayer. And I know that you always hear me. Father, I know that you're always hearing my prayer. You're always answering. You're always giving me the things I've been asking for. So Jesus never faced any failure in prayer. Now, why is that important for us to emphasize or even talk about? It's because we must understand that if Jesus had that kind of a prayer life, then we have the possibility of growing into that same standard Uh, in our prayer lives. That means we also can come to a place where we could pray uh, the way Jesus prayed, and we could have a a, a prayer life where our prayers will always be answered. We can grow into it. I, I understand that we are not there. I understand that we've already had many failures in prayer, but we can always grow to be like Jesus. And that's what Jesus wants for us. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 10 and verse 24, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. And then in verse 25, he said, It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. That means Jesus is saying, Look, this is the standard I've set for you. And all I'm asking you is to be like me, to have that same experience, to live as I live. And so we are journeying into that. And even in our prayer lives, we are journeying into a place in prayer where we could be like Jesus and we could pray the way he prayed, and also have the answers the way he had them. And for that, we need to be perfectly trained. Jesus said, a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. We go through this training process that God has for us so that we can grow and become like Jesus, even in our prayer lives. You know, we must keep this in mind that Uh, It is God who designed the system of prayer. It is God who planned it. It it is God who designed it. And therefore, there are no flaws in the system God designed. Uh, It is not a a flawed system. It is a flawless system. And according to what God has told us, He has promised to answer prayer all the time. If we pray the way He taught us to pray, if we pray the way He wants us to pray, then we will get the results that he promised. And in all of his promises concerning prayer, it's always a yes and an amen. So the system that God has designed is flawless. There are no flaws in it. And so we must arrive at that place where we know how to engage with God in prayer successfully, fruitfully, like the way Jesus did. So obviously that would lead us to a question. Why don't we always get answers to prayer the way Jesus got answers to prayer? What are those things that limit us? And I just want to make a mention of a few. First of all, we ask amiss. That means we ask according to our own uh, uh, evil desires. And James points that out for us in James chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. He says, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your own lust. That is one reason. Uh, We use the wrong kind of prayer. 
Uh, that means we don't know how to pray the way we're supposed to pray, how to pray correctly. Uh, and so we experience failure in prayer. Sometimes we experience failure in prayer because we give up before the answer actually arrives. Uh, and so we quit on our prayers and we miss the answer that God actually has sent for us. Sometimes it could be hindrances in our own lives, like sin and pride and other things that are unbelief and disobedience that actually are hindrances to prayer, which the Lord clearly has indicated uh, would keep us from receiving answers to prayer. So we must understand that uh, there, are, there are these things that hinder us, uh, that could hinder prayer, and so we need to be careful to keep those things out of our lives. One last thing before we close up on the telecast today is that we must understand also that there are boundaries to prayer. That means when we say we must have a prayer life like Jesus and uh, where Jesus never experienced a failure in prayer, we're not saying that, you know, we could just ask a, any random thing, anything outside of what God has ordained for our lives. There are boundaries in prayer. For example, we cannot manipulate other people's will in prayer. We cannot control other people's will. God has created every person as a, a, a free moral being. And through my prayer, I can't dictate God to change that person's will or that person's uh, choose choices. I can ask God to influence them. I can ask God to give them wisdom. I can ask God to move upon them by His Spirit and so on. But God will not dictate another person's will just because I prayed. I cannot manipulate and get them to do what I want them to do through prayer. A second thing we cannot do in prayer is we cannot change God's word and we cannot change God's overall plan for mankind. Our God has determined certain things uh, which He will do, and we can't change that uh, through our prayer. We can only align our prayer to His purposes and to His Word, but we can't change His Word or change His purpose through our prayer. That means what God has determined for mankind, the overall purpose for mankind, we can't change that. That is unalterable, and we stay aligned to that in prayer. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in the Word, as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Admissions are now open for the academic year 2018 for Certificate in Theology and Christian Ministry, Diploma in Theology and Christian Ministry, Bachelor of Theology and Christian Ministry. For application forms and brochure, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College or call us at 998545-4899. We trust that this telecast, as we continue building on our understanding on prayer, has enriched your life. That it has motivated you uh, to want to be more like Jesus. This is always inspiring, to look at Jesus and focus on Him as our model uh, and as our pattern for prayer. May you and I be inspired to follow the example of Jesus and to come into that place of prayer where, like Jesus, we can say, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. I know when I pray, my Father in heaven will answer. May God bring you and me into that place and position of prayer. Let's journey into that place and position. Where like Jesus, we have that total assurance and we see our prayers answered always. Let's pray together before we close. Father, we ask for the grace of God upon our lives grace to be multiplied upon us so that we could grow in prayer and God that we could come into that place in prayer where like Jesus every prayer we pray will be answered oh God we ask you will help us grow and become like Jesus in our own prayer lives we thank you that you enable us by your spirit to do this and become this in Jesus name amen Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. And until next time, remember, live life 
the Jesus way. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming of People's Church, uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India.